Julius Mercier from the second. He is uh, uh, Samudya Kasturiyarachi, director of the National Museum of Colombo. May I request Ms. Kasturiyarachi to come to the table, please? We have got uh, four presentations in this session. And I will read out the names and request the speakers to come to the head table, please. From Bangladesh, we have Ms. Roshan Ara Begum. From Bhutan, we have Venerable Kenpo Kunsok Kashi and Ms. Borji Wangmo. I think uh, Venerable Kenpo will be presenting the paper. Welcome to the head table, please. From India, we have got Mr. A.N. Mishra from the Ministry of Culture. Please come to the head table. And also from India, we have got Dr. J.N.T. Rath from the State Museum of Orissa. Please come to the head table. Development of museum, 
collecting antiquities and research activities have been taken up in honesty. There are 418 protected monuments in Bangladesh now. Among them, two cultural heritage sites of Bangladesh have been declared by WSC and UNESCO as World Heritage Site. <coughs> the sites are ruins of the Buddhist Vihara at Pahalpur and the historic mosque city of Bagelhar. Five other cultural heritage sites have been proposed to be enlisted. Those are still in, in, in tentative list of World Heritage Center. The Lambat Coast is one of them. Kerala Lalbar is a poor palace. It was founded during the second half of the 17th century AD and was called Aurangabad, which means the locality of Emperor Aurangzeb. The history of the construction of the fort, however, is associated with Prince Azam Shah and General Shaista Khan. It occupies the southwestern part of the old Dhaka city, overlooking the Buriganga River on coast northern bank. It stands as a silent sentinel of the old city. The fort is rectangular in plan and was enclosed on all sides by high walls made of brick and brick dust. There are three lofty gates and some glass towers at different parts of each southern fortification wall. There are some significant monuments inside the fort. These are audience Hall Kamhammam, Muslim of Bibitori, Mosque of Shahzada Azum Shah, Water, Water Reservoir, Military Guard, Garden and Fountain, South Gate of Kalbakko Museum. Now I would like to introduce Muslim of Bibitori. This is called Bokpuri Bibi Majar. Dear audience, it occupies the central portion of the fort. It is a single domed, multi chambered domed structure. Bibi Pori's mausoleum is a unique Mughal monument in Bangladesh. It has a central hall encircled by eight smaller chambers on each four sides. The central hall contains the mortal remains of Bibi Pori, who was the daughter of Viceroy Saista Khan. The building combines in itself the Muslim and Hindu style of architecture on a very different mode. Secondly, Hammam, Kam audience hall, which is called the it is a two-story building used as a wedding hall come resting apartment and the audience hall by the Mughal provincial administrators. It accommodates a bathing complex along with three wedding come reception rooms in each ground floor. The upper story also has three rooms. They might have been in use for official work. The architecture of the building is impressive because of its roof that represents 
Dark traditional Bengali house or hut or chowchala in big monastery. It is supposed to have been built by Saista Khan. Thirdly, Mosque of Sahajada Azam Shah. It stands on the western part of the fort. It is a three dome typical Mughal mosque built by the Prince Azam Shah. But it is the only example of its kind in Bangladesh in view of its artistic embellishment that is fresco. Now I would like to introduce garden and fountain. Recent archaeological excavations have proved that there exist, existed fountains along with a typical Mughal garden and subterranean water supplying terracotta channel at different points of the fort. Now, military barrack. Excavations on the high ground also exposed the military barrack, the roof garden of the Mughals, a staircase built inside a basin next to the large wall, which leads to the ground level outside of the river deck. South gate of Lalbar Court. This represents the south eastern gateway is an imposing three-story structure. Its lofty four centered archway on the top story is framed in stonework under a big half dome and flanked on either side with slender octagonal turrets rising in stages. The four corners on top are originally crowned by small dome piers, gracefully breaking the skyline. Two of these still survive. Now I would like to introduce museum. After the restoration of the audience hall and hammam, it has now been converted into a Mughal court museum. It displays on the ground floor a collection of arms and armors, including bows and arrows, various types of daggers, spears, swords, gaffes, shells, helmets, three types of pistols and guns, Parkos on love, clean cloth, and mass replica of Mughal coins, with a mapping, with a map showing the distribution of mine towns in India. <coughs> Ceramics including tiny jars, Persian utensils, plates, cinnamon, specimens, and Mughal miniature paintings including one of the Prince Azum Shah, Mughal commands and stone inscriptions, light and sound show. The fort was eventually protected by the Department of Archaeology in 1910. The fort was in use till the middle of the 19th century AD. Thereafter, it was deserted and had been in oblivion for more than half a century. This is the period when most of its architectural environments were stripped off and decayed. It was also used as a police barrack during the Pakistani occupation period. At last, it came under the direct control of the Department of Archaeology during the 70s of the last century. Since then, the Department of Archaeology has been carrying restoration work and excavation in different parts of the fort. Crucial needs for the museum management plan. The museum management program should be designed 
to collect and preserve specific plain data and make the information available to museum staff and the public in an efficient manner. Considering in this slide, it is easier to understand how different types of resources in collections might be administered in different ways, depending upon the local needs for documentation, preservation, display, and use. Now I will introduce objectives. These are improve understanding of the museum values of any site, development of the getting, setting of the museum display, proper conservation of the historic fabric of antiquities, local community involvement, digital management, risk management, sustainable tourism, curriculum development, digital awareness. There are some research and publications. Elevated authentic data for publication, digitized documentation of museum collection, establish a research desk in each site museum for purposes of research and study of the site and museum collection, organize seminars and workshops for create new knowledge for museum management, establish and organize training center for the museum staff. Conservation management plan. Ensure the best practices to conserve the site and museum collection. Develop links with appropriate scientific and technical institutions both within and outside the country to adopt best practices in conservation and presentation practices and technologies. Now, display and presentation. Employ efficient designers and display officers to work with scholars, museum staffs. Entry free of museums should be built for five countries people. Last but not the least, I would like to introduce tourism and digital management. These are check and balance the tourism pressure in special days, provide local storage area for visitors there, provide replicas for the tourist and visitors as gift item, provide a community canteen for the visitors who will come to the museum, not only for knowledge and information, but also enjoyment. And that's the end of my presentation. I again thank you, my lovely audience, for patient caring and helping to present the paper. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. So I'm very happy after having wonderful lunch. Bhutan is the very well known to outside of Bhutan. Land of gross national happiness. Have you heard about gross, gross national happiness? Are you happy now? Yes. Maybe you are falling asleep <laughs> after having a heavy lunch. So, my name is Kempo Hunzokashi, working as a director of National Museum for over a decade. And uh, my papers uh, and my colleague, Doji Wang, is the Curators of uh, Trongsa Museums, Central Bhutan, is located in Central Bhutan. I come from the, uh, the nearby international airport called Paro, where the exit and entrance, you have to be there. But many visitors, they miss my National Museum Bhutan. I'm very uh, eager to have you all, whenever you visit Bhutan, please visit National Museum. So my paper is the role of culture as the history of preservations in promoting peace and harmony within the South Asian region. How we are going to, we have harmony, but how we can sustain the harmonies at the advent of Western tsunamis. I hope there's no Westerners here. <laughs> so Western tsunamis. So I think we have to preserve the, this morning they talk about National Museum or Museums is the uh, education center and, and some kind of, I think Museum is the, the learning center as in history, you can learn only the history, the past history and culture through Museums. So how the next, uh, I can just, Bhutan is a small landlocked country. Bhutan is also very well known as one of the the, the destinations for tourists now, one of the 10 hot spots in the world, I think so. Then, now, 
So Bhutan, if you talk about Bhutan, it's a small country because most Bhutan, most outsiders, they do not know where Bhutan is located. Bhutan is located situated in between China and uh, India. It's not easy to locate. So National Museum is the East. We have a total eight museums. One is a National Museum which was established 1968. Now we are going to celebrate Golden Jubilee after two years, two, three years. So National Museum is now under renovations because it got uh, damaged by earthquake in 2011 uh, September. So National Museums, National, uh, National Museums, uh, I can't see it. So thousand opened to the National Museum in 1968, the name of National Museum of Bhutan and was the first ever museum in Bhutan. Thaadong Watchtower was originally built in 19, 1649 by the second governor of Thao. The third monarch, Jimmy Doji Wangchu, was the one of the, the lead Bhutan's cartoons and exhibitions. But anyhow, I will give you general. The, in Bhutan National Museums, we, uh, we conduct two times of uh, exhibitions in a year. And also we call the proceedings of the colloquium, symposiums, intellectuals. They can, after the exhibitions, they can, they can write a paper. So we invite national scholars and also outsiders. And also outsiders, they write on the, the artifacts doing research and reprint. We call the proceedings of the colloquium. Now we reach up to the setting of the colloquium. All the research scholars are not necessarily the museum uh, uh, staff, uh, because the researchers, history, the scholars, writers, any uh, disciplines, we invite them. So now our next, our uh, the colloquium uh, proceedings of colloquium will be focusing on the natural uh, history. I call uh, maybe you must be wondering that spiritual ecology. We call the spiritual ecology. Why? the environment is important. So that's why like in now Bhutan is very really high altitude, but uh, now the, the non, uh, the national animals are migrating to Bhutan because of global warming. So that's why like a tiger's nest, where the water tigers from West Bengal are migrating. And also the uh, Bhutan is the, the home of the black neck queen, which is really the rare species in the world. So that's why we are going to Really conduct by the next 2015 on the, the, the natural history, uh, the natural history on the uh, uh, ecology. So that's why we are going to invite, if it is possible, uh, from the, the South Country. So my proposal is now, uh, I, because I, I'm not going to throw all the papers. So can you show? So this is the National Museum buildings uh, located in Paro. Now, what is the national, because I can propose, but uh, you can read in the paper that to promote the harmony, peace, and happiness in the South regions, we like, would like to have a small gallery in the National Museum of Bhutan representing um, all seven countries uh, which can integrate history and culture of each country. So that's why I uh, would like to really suggest that if you can really send us at least 15 artifacts, uh, costumes, or whatever you have, which can really integrate and educate the Putinist people and also the international visitors. We are having around at least uh, such a small country since uh, these are destinations of the tourists. We are receiving almost 100,000 visitor in a year in Bhutan. So out of 100,000, at least we are receiving 75,000 to 80,000 to national museums. So it means that not only Bhutanese, through your art object, we can educate all the international, uh, you know, multi-millionaires, movie stars, uh, head of the state, uh, guests, and VIPs, students, so we can really uh, cater to your other object to educate the, the world wide. So that's why I think then 
goodness people also will understand that how we are connected. Because we are no more even an isolated now. Because whether we are, even though we are different countries, but all are equal under the preservation of culture and emotions, and uh, loving the peace and happiness and the harmony. So that's why I send my small uh, request. And this morning we are talking about the the artifact now, you know, losing. But we have Interpol. Interpol, we are having connected in Bhutan, for example, if we happen to lose our art object, immediately we can really show on the television or what are these uh, internet, we can advertise. And I think few other times we have we have received we got back from the, the with the help of the police. So there's not really uh, because tomorrow I have seen that some of our the presenter they're going to really present on the digitalizing our uh, some it's very easy now. We are connected by the software. So that's why it's very easy to access now uh, this uh, this kind of uh, museums. So not only really we are just trying to deal with a dead object because I belong to almost because people are asking me what are you doing temple in the National Museum of Bhutan. I always tell them I'm also part of like a art objects because I deal with the dead object. So it's not living. So now we should really revive the main purpose of museum is I saw uh, four things. One is education, other one is really building our harmonies and understanding, not only the directors, not only the police, uh, the, the decision makers, uh, the people to people making connections through our object. So National Museum, we can uh, really provide a small gallery to showcase, to exhibit the whole South countries, uh, the history and culture, to build a uh, further uh, strengthening the happiness, and we can also share our happiness. Happiness doesn't belong to Buddhist people. Happiness for everybody. So this is, the, for example, our tea, tea kettles. Uh, quite recently we have exhibitions. And we received almost 40 to uh, 50,000 visitors to view the tea kettles alone for six months. So there's having a lot of you know, visitors coming. I don't know here how many foreigners you are visiting. We are receiving almost 80 persons of foreigners because Buddha is a very small country. Temples, go to temple, and uh, what you see, uh, uh, one of the, the itineraries. So these are exhibitions and masks. And this is, the, I'm talking about the Natural History Gallery. We have a snow leopard, and these all, you know, I call the mountain, uh, mountain gold. It means the cortisep. Have you heard about the cortisep, which grows? Five, uh, 5,000 meters above, that in summer warm, winters become grass. So it's cortisol, it's very expensive. That uh, uh, grass and, and this warm caterpillars are type of warm. Uh, one kilogram, it costs how much? Maybe 25,000 US dollars. So that's why uh, some people can buy a paper on this, uh, like a crane, on tigers, on any animals. Then this is the Tanka paintings. Tanka is a score paintings. Uh, these are this goes back all the Tankas in the 17th centuries. The conservations they have really conserved so well. So we can, this is the conservation of our team. They are working on that. Yes, these are how uh, we are having the proceedings of the polygon. Okay? And this is the, the papers that we presented so from the 11th century to the contemporary art. The scholars are presented, uh, presented in the papers. And this was circulated around the world, even the level of college, college universities, British museums, and Indian universities. The contents are very rich and very much research on the papers. So now, when you talk about the 21st century, uh, new trends of considerers across the South region. So I suggested five points. Security strengthening physical structures are through usage of teaching, uh, self, uh, traditional art and uh, uh, artist exchange program, building of the capacity and strengthening of the, the silk on uh, the music management, self galleries and buildings of peace and understandings of harmonies, joint self 
meeting exchange and exhibitions. But we should really not only the meeting and we can just drop it here and say goodbye. I think we can really continue until people are satisfied what we are doing. So this is the National Museum of the Security Guard and it is in, in December. If you come to this in December, you may see the stupas built uh, of the, 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 what you call the snow. So you can ski even the, if it is a very heavy snowfall. But we are having nowadays global warming. Uh, our the, now type of what this weather is, uh, is uh, unpredictable now. Yes. This is how we have CCTV. Uh, in uh, that, uh, each object we have a you know sensitive. Now once if you happen to touch, they automatically get recorded. So that's why every month we have a committee that we go through that weather. So that's why it's our security is quite uh, quite well established in the National Museum. And also we have a small detectors. This is also a metal detector that, that people go through. This is the only the entrance and exit, so they can really be the all the body in this camp. And this is the happy, I think you, uh, some of you must have been to Bhutan, that the Bhutanese people love, the Bhutanese people love to eat red uh, rice and chilies. They don't have to, the special female, they don't have to buy lipsticks. Because it, uh, there's a beetle nuts makes your lips red. So that's why people are eating the beetle nuts uh, before there's a beetle nuts, uh, there's a lime, the container of the lime, and the, some uh, beetle nuts and leaves, they always keep on chewing. Maybe it's heating up your body. And this used to be the, the cup, the personal uh, cup of the first king. Yeah. So this is a panka, yes. This is status, you know that. It is a tea kettle. I have seen this morning. This morning, and now I think you have seen in uh, Bangladesh. There's a very similar. You see, you can share, but uh, this art object, small art objects, depicts the skills of the artisans and the history. So not only tea kettle is a wonderful just watch and uh, you know, enjoy seeing here, but when you look at the detail, the art, the, the aesthetic, the artistic values, and who crafted that wonderful art. So it goes back many centuries and also appreciate the artisans in those days. And also people can really, you know, try to craft this kind of art objects because of silver and gold, sometimes a clay pot you can find, also stone, many different kinds of art objects. So can you go next? So, Museum outreach programs reaching the unreached. So can you show next? How we do now? This is the how we are giving the talk, gallery talk, these the teachings next. The students, you see how the people so this are national uh, in Tromsa. So these are students are coming. So they request uh, the National Museum's staff to give a gallery talk. It's a very busy, fully engaged. So we are not only the web page and internet, also when they come physically, the part of study tour. So we facilitate, we give them a, a one hour talk on history and culture of Bhutan. So in the future, if you can send at least uh, 15 art objects, so seven, eight countries, maybe 120 art objects, we can showcase we can exhibit in a national museum to integrate so we can send our staff to study in uh, your country to study about your uh, culture and history. So then that staff, that particular business center can really integrate and give a talk uh, to the students. Next. This is the National Museum, that was the uh, uh, Royal Museum in Tongsa. Next. So this is the Tongsa which is built 16 52. National Museum was 1649, almost a few years uh, differences. Next. This is the same museum. So this is how uh, the, in the, the Tonsa Museum are gathered. Okay. So anyhow, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the wonderful meals.
just I will give you beside the topic, if you have just a one minute about the gross national happiness. Please, the people ask me to give a talk on happiness. Their gross national happiness has nine domains, or we can say key factors, and 72 indicators. Happiness is the most easy to measure. Happiness, gross national happiness, Bhutan is not a smiling face of Disney name. So the happiness has a very deeper meaning and has to do how to measure happiness. For example, even our, you know, even you are relaxed and happy, if you are tempered, a person, a happy person, a, a person, if you relax and meditate and you are happy, then your mission will say your blood pressure will go down automatically. So happiness, gross national happiness has been pronounced by the fourth king of Bhutan, 1979. Now gross national happiness is the guiding principle of philosophy of any development of Bhutan. So gross national happiness is the antidote to the modern uh, development. So that's why 72 indicators, nine domains. First domain is the psychological well-being. Second is preservation, culture, and promotion. The third one, ecological diversity and resilience. Fourth, education, right education, not only education, the right education, health, then the time you use, how many hours you sleep, how many hours you spend with your family. Then economic prosperity, good governance, these nine domains. Psychological well-being, what is indicators? Is a frequency of meditations and reciting and chanting. So this is kind of a gross national happiness. So if you want to visit Bhutan, you are welcome. But don't expect that you will get a package of happiness from Bhutan. But happiness is everywhere. So each person has their own definition. My definition is so when I participate from the right beginning to the uh, present of Brosnan happiness in Brazil, in uh, Thailand, in Canada, in Bhutan. Very simple. Cultivation of positive mental attitude is the definition of gross national happiness, according to me, not according to all the sufferers. Okay, thank you very much. Be happy and relax. First of all, I take this opportunity to congratulate SAR Cultural Center for holding such a grand conference. I would like to put the change in nomenclature of this conference to confluence of culture of all the member states of SAR, which gave us an opportunity to present papers on culture and exchange our ideas on the subject development of museums. As an under secretary of the government of India, looking after the files of museums, I have come across the challenges in new things present they are facing with and the initiatives taken by the government of India to address the challenges. Friends, the museums throughout the world, including South Asia, have experienced major changes over the last couple of decades. Impacts of the globalization, market economy, changing technology, and necessity to address various digital segments are some of the things which are posing new challenges to museums worldwide. And South Asia is no exception to this. In this paper, I have made an attempt to explore the meaning and role of museums as key intellectual and civic resource in the times of profound social and environmental change. Written from an, as an insider, my this paper observes the unique contribution that museums can make as social institutions embedded in their communities 
and own collectivity by the society. I have presented a list of reforms undertaken by the various museums of India to fulfill this objective. For example, museums are playing a more involved role in the curricular program of schools and with this end in view, some of them are going to or may launch a series of on-site classes for students on Indian history with their own objects, providing a visually enriching experience for their students. Upgradation and modernization of their galleries and historic areas are another thrust areas for museums in India. For museums, in order to ensure an enhanced educative experience for visitors, for ensuring conservation, restoration and display of artwork, keeping with the best international practices. The museums in India have also made huge strides in digitization and computer edit collection management. Production of souvenir items from the collections, the museums, but this could be another activity to be undertaken to help self-sustainability so that they can they cannot they should not be viewed as see, on the as a, uh, a burden for the government they can actually generate some funds for themselves further today's digital technology have provided a dizzying array of tools that offer endless opportunities for museums to become more meaningful to the society generally virtual museum builder is a digital collection management system especially designed and developed for the Indian museums. The system is compliant with open source and standardized forms and helps in email process, watermarking, unique numbering and managing the digital image with multimedia representation of the antiquities in terms of 360 degree interactive panoramic views, 3D models, audio and video videos. Hence at the present conference is on development of museums in South Asia, I would like to take you to have a brief retrospection on the evolution of the concept of museums in this region, particularly in India. Thus, museums have now achieved a place to be recognized as symbols of nation's pride, as its national flag, anthem, or monuments. But let us admit that museums were not an integral part of our culture. Our culture believes in consigning objects to flames or water once its life is over. Most of us are genetically repaid at the thought of handling impure items that belong to dead man. Though Islamic rule introduced Toshkhana, but it was more of a palace treasury than a public display of artifacts. Thus, when the British started the concept of collections for purposes of education, exhibitions, and pride, the masses looked upon them with wonder, earlier as Jadu Hats or House of Mystery or Mask. The educated class, however, saw them as demonstrating the last grandeur of India to their masters. Two centuries of enforced or willing cultural absorption, however, have not yielded greater museum management. The subject of museology was certainly not regarded as highly as in the West, nor were rewards, societal or monetary, anywhere near what other professions would offer. Like librarians, archivists, or archaeologists, the wars in the disciplines like museology and, and conservation had to suffer a lot, leading to penury and degradation, while academics could reach dating heights. This is one of the factors that the subject museology or this archaeologist, they are, they are not gaining momentum. People are not actually uh, very much uh, interested in going into these areas. When the Indian Museum was founded in Calcutta in 1840, it was first of its kind outside Europe. By the late 19th or early 20th century, another seven museums came across India, clearly 
we have a heavy star, our most nations, and we still have some of the oldest and finest collections in our, our museums. And on this occasion, I would like to inform you that the oldest museum in Asia, that is Indian Museum, Kolkata, celebrated its bicentenary centenary on 2nd January 2014. And Government of India granted 99.76 crore, uh, about 100 crore, for its monumental upgradation and modernization. And this inaugural function of bicentenary celebration was graced by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, which in itself shows the political will for the museums to take forward for fulfilling their objectives. In spite of heroic attempts being made of late by the premier museums in Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai, they are still viewed as country cousins by the world at large. The regions are not difficult to fathom. Visitors are usually greeted by boring or indifferent staff rather than exciting and interactive electronic screens, slick and attractive flyers, or smart and informative interpretation centers. Most museums do not even offer a basic floor plan for visitors to plan their walkthrough. Although some minimal information is available on the internet, for just about 5 to 10 percent of India's museum, none had a basic interactive web portal. Before Google started its web portal, web walk of the National Museum and some other things. Now, Google has started signing MOUs with different museums in India. The concept of introducing audio guides, voice phones, have now gained momentum very recently, and as a result, many of the museums and the Ministry of Culture in, in, in India now have four floor plans, audio guides, and digital information kiosks. But hundreds of other museums, including almost all the state government ones, do not have such facilities. Shortage of space for display and proper storage is an eternal problem. The Indian Museum, the oldest museum in Asia Pacific region, can exhibit hardly 6 to 10 percent of their price based collections. While the Victoria Memorial Hall manages to show some 10 percent collections, the construction of much discussed and the NXC building, that is the development, development plan, was held up for a decade by direct court cases. Though digitization of collections has slowly started regressing archive registers, it will take several years to place them in the public domain. Thus, the handing over of a collection of a gallery in a leading museum usually takes between three and five years. Exhibitions are another killing field as objects are usually overvalued for several insurance. If you want to exhibit your objects in the international uh, forum, you have to uh, pay a more because this insurance, if you do insurance of the objects, that pushes up premium and costs. Where the flexibility of e.g. indemnity that prevails in the West is yet to be understood. If you go for indemnity, that will plus cost you less. But that practice is not followed in our side, in South Asian regions. We generally go for the insurance. In house curators hardly exist or are living to exert themselves, while guest curators are viewed with suspicion or are tied out with intolerable delays and non cooperation. Galleries remain untouched for several decades while the museum's heads come and go. The Italian friends can go on basis, but where does the solution lie? I would submit that all the bottlenecks and energetic and need energetic and immediate spring training to revamp the museums, to enable them to come as far as the museums in the West. Autonomy from the procedures responsible for red capital is directly called for, and professional trustees can be encouraged to visualize and execute disparate rescue operations. We also require a dedicated capital of well-paid new generation museum professionals who are trained overseas. This had just begun in India and must be interested in the adequate powers of our intense naysayers. Mandatory performance targets that are periodically monitored can inject speed in reforms. And friends, I will tell you just after how government of India 
have given performance targets to each and every agency in India under the government of India and how has it become uh, uh, successful. But above all, we require political will and a determination to restore nuisance in India from the pitiable stage in which most of them operate. In order to address all such challenges which I have enumerated now, Ministry of Culture, after brainstorming with museum experts and directors, has listed 14 issues for museum reforms. And all the 14 issues with all the sub-activities sub under each of the uh, reform, uh, I have alleged in this paper, if, one want to, if this is published, you can uh, see, and you can also uh, see, uh, ensure that the museums in your country should also uh, do all these things, 14-point museum reforms. This generally, the 14-point museum reforms have uh, included all the aspects which uh, if museum adopts would go a long way in, uh, the, in the reformative process of museums. In this, the, and the base of this reforms is monitored through various periodical reports and review meetings at secretary and joint secretary level with museum heads in the ministry. It's in addition, Ministry of Culture has started a new method of bringing in reforms in the museums under its control. Friends, I will tell you from 2014, under the ever guidance of our secretary culture and joint secretary museums, all the museums. Though they are autonomous, they are tasked with, uh, with their uh, subordinate offices. All the mediums are now required to sign MOUs with the ministry, with the, such, with the targets given therein. If this year we will do this, uh, such exhibitions, uh, uh, audio guides implementation, general software implementation. We have given targets to all mediums, and their performance are monitored quarterly or quarterly basis. I have enclosed a specimen of this MOU for further necessary action at your end. The significant milestones achieved out of the implementation of these 14 points, major reforms, which I have noticed are the physical verification of objects have now done almost complete in Victoria Memorial Hall. There are 28,394 art objects and the physical verification of all the objects have been completed. So there are other number of footfalls are in, have increased. Victoria Memorial has emerged as the most visited museum in India with more than 30 lakh people visiting during uh, 34. In order to upgrade and modernize the museum, Ministry of Culture has introduced so many uh, uh, schemes. Even the state museums, private museums, they are being given uh, granted to upgrade and uh, to uh, set up new museums. In addition, we have a network of science museums also there. And in the science museum, as per the recommendation of National Knowledge Commission in India, we have introduced innovation hubs. Innovation hubs are components, five components, and I want to give you those components that is very much see, uh, educative for the students and to build, uh, to actually, um, build in scientific temper uh, in them. And these, uh, these facilities are when the innovation resource center are there, idea lab is there, you can, any student can put idea in the box. And uh, that ideas are uh, actually, uh, taken by the authorities in the National Council of Science Museum. And those ideas are actually, uh, if the idea is beneficial the, uh, and it is worthy to accept, then that is taken. Information kiosk on invention and innovations. Technology Labs, Thor Ford Jod, Hindi version, that is break and remake workshop. This is for the students. You break and remake. Kamar se juga, this is Hindi meaning. This means construct from scrap. Design studio, fab lab, these all, all these are 
from uh, the uh, uh, have been included in the innovation part. Sessions are also held uh, uh, under this scheme for the students who uh, for, in the holidays, weekends, and uh, after school hours. And uh, for the uh, development of professional museum professional, we have signed an MOU with Metropolitan Museum of Arts. Sixteen fellowships are four fellowships will be actually uh, funded by the government of India, and twelve fellowships will be funded by SRI Netherlands and Metropolitan Museum of Arts, New York. So this way, uh, museum professionals of uh, international standard with expertise will be developed in India. With a view to ever a mechanism in place and the outcome achieved, I expect that the museums in India, with its right vision and dedicated leadership, may record a qualitative turnaround and would be able to come up as the most sought for social institutions. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that outcome of this present conference, SAR International Conference on Development of India in South Asia would write a new chapter in the success story of in the museums and arts, particularly in respect of South Asia, which in turn would add a new figure in the cap of SAR Cultural Center, Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. I will be talking now. The museum movement in India with special reference to Odisha. The museum movement in India that back to 1840 when the Indian Museum at Kolkata was first established by the Asiatic Society of Bengal with a Danish botanist Dr. Nathaniel Wallich as the first curator. The movement emerged upon a new phase of development during the time of Lord Curzon, who had evinced key interest in the preservation of the archaeological monuments of the country. He had established several museums and Sir John Marshall an eminent archaeologist as appointed as the Director General of Archaeological Survey of India. It was during his period that a number of museums at places like Khadra, Gwalia, Jodhpur, Ajmer, Sarnath, Nalanda, Nagarjun Kunda, and Baripada were established. Some museums were established under the auspices of the Archaeological Survey of India and some others came up under the initiative of feudal rulers and private bodies. In the year 1936, Markham MP and H. Hargreaves, former DG of ASI, brought out a report on 105 museums that existed in India. Thereafter, there has been a steady growth of the museums both in government and private sector and the numerical strength has gone up to more than 800 today. The importance of the museum in the educational setup of the country was emphasized with the formation of the Museum Association of India in 1944. The establishment of the National Museum at New Delhi in 1949 with a high level of managerial competence went a long way in providing the most needed leadership and orientation to the movement. Apart from the large number of archaeological museums and multi-purpose provincial museums, a number of organizations like the Craft Museum New Delhi, the Health Museum Hyderabad, Calico Museum of Textiles Ahmedabad, etc. have been developed in various fields of human knowledge. The Coy Museum at Anjali near Nasik is exclusively made for numismatic study. It has been established by joint efforts of Dr. P. L. Gupta, the renowned historian and the museologist, and K. K. Maheshwari, the great industrialist. Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Manav Sangharaya of Bhopa represents the ethnic culture of man vividly. The Tribal Museum of Bhubaneswari is a miniature form of that. The whole culture has been projected here in that place. The Museum Movement in Odisha. Odisha is a province in Indian Federation. The first museum in Odisha was established at Baripada in 904, 1904 under the patronage of Sri Ramchandra Bandaja, the ex ruler of Mahathan, with the personal collection of copper platinum, stone sculptures, archival letters, old coins, prehistoric tools, seals, tablets, etc. Paramananda Acharya, the eminent archaeologist 
and make this museum with the collection of prehistoric and the archaeological remains from different places of Mahabharata, the display pattern, documentation of objects, and identification of the antiquities followed the pattern of Indian Museum of Calcutta. The excavation and exploration conducted by R.P. Chanda and Paramananda Acharya in Kitchen and Viragar brought into existence of the Kitchen Museum in 1928. This is one of the best archaeological museums in the country, preserving the sculptures of Brahmanical, Buddhist and Jaina pantheons, copper plate drums, excavated materials of Viragar, coins, pottery, etc. So, Kitchen Museum, Buddha, Baripada Museum, Buddha, and the Kichakeshwari Temple. Please, please. This is Kichakeshwari Temple, and you will be astonished to know that this temple was reorganized after it was dismantled totally. And in the history of Indian archaeology, it is a new event, it is a rare event. Never a temple is reorganized. No happen. The colossal image of Hara, Mahisa Mardini Durga, next. The colossal image of Hara, Mahisa Mardini Durga, Saptamatrika, Uma Maheshwar, Buddha, etc., are the exquisite workmanship indicating the heyday of Hara and sculpture under the Bhandya rulers who ruled over Kijinga Kota. It is the largest local museum in Odisha with a lavish collection of antiquities. Now, now I am coming to Odisha State Museum. The Odisha State Museum was founded on 29 December 1957 by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first president of India. The guiding spirit behind this museum were Professor N. Shri Banerjee and Professor Ganasyam Das. Later on, Paramananda Acharya joined with them. I must say here that Paramananda Acharya is to be considered the father of the museum movement in Odisha. After the merger of the princely states with the province of Odisha, scholars like K.N. Mahapatra and Satyanarayan Rajguru, then serving in the archaeological department of Kalaman state, were brought to Bhubaneswar and engaged as curators in the state museum. Padma Sri Krishna Chandra Panindari was then associated with the state museum and was working on the projects on archaeological remains at Bhubaneswar. Sushil Chandra De joined state museum. He had the knowledge on archaeology and manuscript as well as records. Located on a vast building, the Odisha State Museum. Go on. Odisha State Museum. The office. Yes. Located on a vast building, on the Odisha State Museum compromises galleries and archaeology, epigraphy, numismatic, armory, natural history, art and craft, anthropology, and palm mom. Palm leaf manuscript. You have seen the rich collection of our palm leaf manuscript today. Mention may be made of Pandit Niramani Isra, Dr. Harish Chandra Das, Dr. Mahesh Prasad Das, Dr. Dinanath Pati, Dr. Ravi Narayan Das, R.P. Pushti, Dr. Sridhar Tripathi, Dr. Ramesh Prasad Mahapatra, Sri Shamsundar Patnai, whose contribution have ended the media movement in Odisha in the subsequent period. The Metaji Subhas Go Sangrahalaya of Qatar, equipped with light and sound system, ensures the visitors with rare photographs of Metaji Subhas Go, the illustrious freedom fighter by way of describing the freedom struggle of India. The site museum of Rathmagiri displays the rare Buddhist sculptures of ancient period. The site museum of Ratnagiri displays rare Buddhist sculptures of ancient period. Another site museum at Ladidgiri is under construction to exhibit the broken Buddhist monuments. This is the painting Radha Krishna with Dasavatar. This with Dasavatar. Buddha is ninth avatar. This is the very time heritage of Odisha sculpture. This is Mahisa Madhuri Durga in grand Matruga sculpture, Varagi. Again, the other museums are there. The museum specially preserved in Jaina's 
sculptures had been built at Pratap Nagar in Yerkata. The site museum at Konar, near famous Sun Temple of Odisha, also deserves mention. It showcases some of the beautiful sculptures which proclaim the dexterity of artisans of Odisha. The Dasarathi Patnai Museum at Nayaga, these are the coins, beautiful coins, Hathavana coins, this is college coins, this is Kishana coins, these are Ganga Thanas, Ganga Thanas, yes, coins of Sri Lanka in our museum, Gajapati Pagoda, yes. Recently, a maritime museum has been established. These are the bronze images of Buddha. Beautiful bronze images, rare images we have collected. Achyutra bronze images. This is Avalokitesa. This is Kurupilla. This is Nukula Kadika Pandora. This is Bhukuti. This is Mandasri. This is Buddha Buddhist Samudra. This is Tara. Vajramukara. This Vajramukara. Please show again. Vajramukara. This image has been to Brussels to be exhibited in the festival of India. And this is the one. Recently, a maritime museum has been established at Joker, Qatar, which points, which points the maritime heritage of Odisha. That Odisha has a rich tradition of maritime trade in different countries, Indonesia, Tamaradipta, that is modern Shingara, Sri Lanka, Java, Sumatra, that has been introduced in India. It also showcases varieties of aquatic plants and animals, including the Museum of Baripada and Kichu. There are 10 more government branch museums in Odisha, located in Puri, Salenpur, Bengala, Balampur, Balayani, Bargad, Nuapada, Kalani, etc. Museums exist to unfold the accumulated wisdom of the past generations before the public. As a medium of education, they have now a much important role to play. This collected property narrates a tale of its own. Analyzing the cultural property protection system in some of the Asian countries, it is felt necessary that every country should employ a trained cultural property protection force under the control of the government. Museums do not exist only for scholars. It must reflect the total personality of a community. There should be space both for children and the agent as well. Education in museum should be available to all on the basis of their desires, inclination and interest. There should be comprehensive process of museology in all universities. Prolongation of the life of an object in the museum is indeed a basic criteria. Several big institutions in India have their own conservation laboratories. So far as the local museums are concerned, dearth of funds and personnel are great handicaps. Emphasis must be given to documentation and digitization of the cultural properties. Museum must be treated as an indispensable instrument for the educational and cultural uplift of the people. Instead of being used as a temporary sensory stimulation, it must elucidate the stakeholders in the field of science and industry, health and environment culture and agriculture, etc. A lot has been done in this regard and a lot more needs to be done. Thank you. Uh, I'm Amit Soni, Assistant Professor, Travel Art and Studies in Indra Gandhi National Travel University, our credit at India. Uh, I have few suggestions and uh, one question uh, to Mr. Mishra also as uh, he is handling. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. okay, okay. okay, okay. okay. Yeah, the specific question is that uh, as we were talking about a uh, few things like uh, museology, museology and museums, uh, till date uh, it has been found in most of the museums, there is less of uh, lack of technical expertise. Still, in the RR, recruitment rules, museology is an optional uh, qualification. So, uh, I believe that this may be, this may be included uh, in the RR of different posts in different museums in India because it has been already initiated. 
what is the situation uh, right now regarding this thing and second thing is uh, in 2003 one uh, there was one meeting of UGC regarding mythology syllabus course curriculum and it was a great discussion at that time but still in India we teach generalized mythology it is not specialized mythology so it is uh, it is these are the two problems which I have seen thank you Lazi, library, uh, archival area. These are the areas which uh, students are not pursuing as the, the general the engineering and medical methods. Because the museums have still to play a demand driven role than an engineering college or other. Forums are playing. That is why bread and butter problem is everywhere. And the institution which provides bread and butter, the general masses actually go for that. First, they opt for that. Then, when the, there is a, a lag behind, then they opt for other. This is the real scenario. Now, the subject of museology. The subject of museology. I have presented in my paper the uh, National Museum Institute, in which you have studied. I think yes, that, yes, I uh, that is the institute, in, that is one of the leading centers in India that provides uh, courses in museum also. And uh, for your information, also, in the conservation field, also, National Laboratory for Conservation of Cultural Property in Lucknow is the Government of India's subordinate office. That provides six months training for conservation. The government of India is actually taking steps for uh, providing from Leeds and AIT. Uh, my comment and a question is addressed to you, Dr. Garg and Mr. Mishra, and to Dr. Tashi. Um, isn't it time we had a rethink? on the concept of a museum in the Indian context. I was greatly struck by your remark, um, Mr. Mishra, that you know you referred to this Vedantic concept of um, the transitory nature of material things, so we do not wish to preserve. But our monuments are our temples, and the Ratnagiri University where Dr. Rathtak and I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I mean, aren't they themselves uh, museums, um, aren't they serving the purpose of a museum? They are richly um, chiseled and ornamental, they're depicting stories of the Jataka and the lifestyles of... So in a sense they are serving as a purpose of a museum whilst themselves being educational institutions. So in this modern concept, should we really radically think that the way a museum is developed in the West, the way the British Museum is or the Louvre is, Shouldn't the government of India be thinking that the whole concept of museum development should be based on new idioms? And to you, Dr. Tashi, you said museums, you, you are sort of linking museums to gross national happiness. I would like to know if what tenets of Buddhism have gone into culture-specific museum representations in Bhutan? Sorry, it was a very rambling question, but I'm very passionate about what I'm asking. Thank you. My voice is very loud. <laughs> Maybe I don't need my. Uh, I, th I think, uh, according to our principle of cross national happiness, as I told you that since cross national happiness is the guiding philosophy of our development, that's so why we have produced a book called. Rethinking Development, the book called Rethinking Development. Something going wrong in our uh, development. So, so apparently we have to shift that. That's why we propose gross national happiness. And we don't want to end up like the rest of the world. What's uh, how we are going, how we are developing now. We know, but still we are running. We are just merging. We know something wrong. So, 
the, the culture, that's why preservation of culture comes under the nine domains, one of the nine domains, preservation and promotion. Doesn't matter whatever you call. So through exhibitions and proceedings of the, uh, the intellectual, uh, you know, the papers of research, these help the museum, the institutions, whatever you call them, like a service this morning says, somebody presented that service sector, education central, learning central, the source of history and culture, whatever you, you call it. But through exhibitions, through the, uh, the proceedings of the, pro pro uh, proceedings of the, uh, the papers, the symposiums, so general public in terms of like for example in Bhutan, people really enjoy it. Nowadays in on televisions of Bhutan, they are showing every on I think Thursday or something, they're showing on the televisions about the proceedings they're reading because establishment of the monasteries, temples, the social how the you know, people uh, really enjoy their life in former times and now or maybe in the future, they are giving some kind of prediction. So people enjoy who organize based, based on the exhibitions, scholar presented the paper. Now they are showing that paper on based on that research paper published by National Museum. Now those who have not been to National Museum from far away from east, south, west. So through television they know the richness of the culture and how the culture can bring harmonies and enhance the happiness of the people. So I think uh, museums, not only the, the people, the working, the, I like very much the curating culture for present and future. I like very much this the title, how they say really curating, you are really describing, you are showcasing, you are interpreting. You know, it's very important. So that's why I think if people, not only the amusement, the museum is just like a, they call it amusement, just enjoy it. But the, the moment you go there and just look at the one art object, it really tells you complete of that period of time. And also the present, what we are, and also for the future. So it means that the compact is really an important place uh, to enhance the happiness of the people just for one object and bring harmonies. So this is what we think the National Museum Library so are the, also I think the performing arts, tangible, intangible culture, whatever. So this is a, one of the, the domains of gross national happiness to support or to enhance the happiness. Uh, Mr. Michel, uh, the purpose of the question was a bit different than I can story. Brother Bhaji is talking about the in situ preservation of the living heritage as the music. And uh, here also, uh, if we take the tradition and, and the, uh, our philosophical uh, background of baggage, what we want to call it. We are talking first of all one part of the cultural heritage, mostly the sculptural or the monumental remains. That's one. So that limits our scope to one particular uh, manifestation of our cultural heritage. There too, in the Hindu tradition especially, a sculpture which is damaged cannot be deified, cannot be worshipped. Huh? And the sculpture by itself is not worshipable unless there is a prana pratishtha. You invoke the soul into the uh, into the sculptures. Only then. So what I'm saying is that all these uh, sculptural uh, remains of the past or the monumental remains of the past, they, as long as they are part of the living heritage, they have survived. And we have got examples uh, in Odisha, for example. Uh, the city of Bhubaneswar is more than 1,000 years old, and it's a continuously habitated, uh, you know, with all its uh, cultural. Uh, and monumental buildings. That's one part of it. But when we talk of the museums, uh, we are talking of not as something, uh, uh, Mr. Vishay used this word, jadugar. 
uh, I just want to add one personal note of that. For the first time when I visited Patna, his hometown, I asked the cycle rickshaw driver to take me to the museum. And he took me to the, to the zoo. <laughs> I said, no. Uh, then I explained that no, it is on the Buddha Mahal and there's a police station in front of it and I, well, whatever I had known. So he said, oh, we want to go to Jadugar. Jadugar is the house of magic. <laughs> So I didn't understand why he is saying that Jadugar because I was not familiar with this term. And then he brought me to the proper museum, Patna State Museum. And when I was paying him the, the fare, what he did, sab eki I'll just translate, say it in Hindi and then translate. He said, sab eki baat hai, maha pe jinda janwa nahi ya mare ho janwa. He said, it's all the same thing, uh, here you have got the living animals, here you have got the dead animals. It's like you don't appreciate what he's saying. As you enter the Patna Museum, on the ground floor is the Shikar collection, the, the, the hunting collection of Maharaj of Darbhanga. And all these uh, taxi dermid, uh, you know, uh, specimens are there. So this poor guy must have seen only that part of the museum. So, coming back to the one of the more serious note, uh, we have to reverse the process. To so use the term, uh, uh, adopted by uh, Mr. Dayalis and I, not only for elegantism, but also to make our museum as a living heritage. You are talking about the making living heritage as the museum. I am putting it on, on its head. Make the museum as part of the living heritage. And that, there comes the, the role of the museum, uh, a very, very interactive and very, very close network role of the museum uh, with the society at large. So that is what uh, I would say in reply to your question. Thank you. Thanks, uh, uh, thank you. 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 Thank you.